Again, they are in the very preliminary stages of investigation. They pointed out this is just uh, maybe two, three hours after the incident. So still a lot of things to come to light. But for now, here is what Lieutenant Mike Shaw was able to confirm to us 20 minutes ago. Uh, right now, what we're doing is we've taken over the investigation at the request of Dearborn Heights. Uh, we're in the process of interviewing everybody that was inside the building at the time. So you can understand that's a pretty lengthy uh, interview process. Uh, we'll be submitting the report over to the medical examiner's office so they can give us any conclusions as far as he goes. Uh, right now, there's no danger to the public. Uh, we believe that he's single. Uh, we're vetting him through our information sources to make sure that there's no other instance that may uh, he may be tied with in the immediate area. Okay, and just to backtrack a little bit, right now what we know is that one man has been shot and killed by a court security officer here at the Dearborn Heights Police and 20th District Court Complex. That man, we are told, walked in to the lobby and tried to bypass security, wielding a weapon. Uh, we are not confirming what that weapon was, although witnesses and sources uh, tell us that it was some sort of a knife. That uh, security officer, privately employed, he uh, shot that man. He was killed. Police have identified the suspect. They believe he was single, meaning he was acting alone, but they are looking into all possibilities at this time. Now, when we arrived, uh, we came to heavy uh, police presence, including two ambulances. Uh, witnesses tell us uh, police were asking people to leave, and as they were, they were checking their IDs. As of now, Dearborn Heights police are fully functional. The courthouse will remain closed for the rest of the day. It is not an active scene. It is a crime scene investigation. Everything is secure inside. Everybody's okay inside. Three officers got out of a car, uh, two different cars, and they had uh, assault rifles or some big kind of rifle and went charging into the building with those. When I got here, there's about two ambulances, a fire truck, and they barricaded every entrance, you know, to come in here. Just want to get in there and just make sure that, you know, our guys are okay. You know, we just need comfort and support right now. That's all we need. Again, still a lot of unknowns at this time. Uh, police can't confirm to us whether that suspect indeed had business at the court this morning. They have identified him. They are waiting to notify next of kin before releasing any further information about him. For now, we are live in Dearborn Heights. We'll send it back to you, Anu. All right, Jane, certainly some very scary moments. Thank you. Now we want to turn to 7 Action News reporter Jennifer Bisram. She has been talking to witnesses all morning. Jen, what are they saying? Hi, Anu. You know, we've been here since a little after 9 o'clock this morning, shortly after this all went down. It was pretty chaotic here this morning. People were just standing around watching to try to figure out what was going on. Now, where we are right now, the other side of the police department on Beach Daily, uh, the other side where you saw my colleague Jane Park a short time ago, it is still very active here. You can see the building still blocked up with yellow tape. There is a state trooper outside as well. Now, when we got here, take a look at some video from earlier this morning. The building blocked off by yellow tape on all sides. EMS workers, ambulances, police cars, choppers, several agencies, including the Inkster Police Department were here. We we're told there was even a DPD officer inside when the building went on lockdown. People who had loved ones inside, they rushed to get here to see what was going on, to see if their loved ones were okay. Now, we did talk with one man whose wife was inside when everything was happening. She works in the records department, and he says when she heard the commotion, the yelling, the shots, she headed straight to the back of the building as far as she can and hid. Take a listen. How did she sound when she was on the phone? And oh, she, was, she was upset. She was crying. Um, and then one of the reasons I rushed up here. Um, but, uh, you know, she, she assured me she was okay, though. You know, your heart sinks, you know. You, uh, as soon as you hear about a shooting, uh, especially when, you know, you got a relative or someone inside, you, uh, you kind of freak out a little bit, you know, the initial, the initial thought. So I, I jumped in my truck from Plymouth and headed right up here. And Michigan State Police saying that man with a weapon was shot dead inside. Investigators spent lots of the morning trying to figure out who he is, including looking at the vehicles in the parking lot of the police department. Now, back here live again, you can see still a very active situation here, an active scene here. Uh, the building is still blocked off right now, but some things to keep in mind here. All the lockdowns have been lifted. State Police wanted to reiterate that there is no threat to anyone inside the building as well as anyone in the neighborhood. But they 
their investigation now beginning. Who was the guy with the weapon and what exactly happened inside? Stay with Action News for the very latest on this developing story. We're live this noon in Dearborn Heights. Jennifer Bisram, 7 Action News. Yeah, a lot of questions to be answered yet. Thank you, Jennifer. Now we want to go live to 7 Action News reporter Jim Kurtzner. Jim, I understand you just talked to someone who saw what happened? We just talked with an eyewitness who was walking into the courts building behind the man with the knife. He describes him as a white male, thin build, bald, older, 45 to 50 years old. This witness was questioned by police and just released a few moments ago. He said he came to court with his brother. His brother said he was high on cocaine, acted crazy when he came in with what he described as a kitchen knife. Here's the best picture of what happened inside. Listen to this. He was going through the metal detector. As he went through the metal detector, I, I noticed he had a knife in his back pocket. The cops noticed he had a knife too. He told him to, you know, drop the knife. He pulled the knife out. He started going towards the cop. The cop repeatedly told him, drop the knife, drop the knife. You know, he didn't listen. He wasn't speaking or he didn't say anything, but he would start coming towards the cop with the knife. The cops start backing up, like going towards back towards the, uh, the counter or, you know, like the security counter. And then he charged at him. He shot once. And then he still didn't drop the knife. He told him, drop the knife, drop the knife. He didn't drop the knife. So he started coming towards him still. After he was shot, he still was coming towards him. The cop shot like five more times. Then he finally went down. Now, this uh, eyewitness, Jamal Collins, said the police repeatedly said, drop the knife. He could tell that the officer did not want to shoot, shot him once. He said in the chest, he could see blood coming from that chest wound, and the man still lunged at police with the knife in his hand. Police said drop the knife when he didn't. That's when they shot several times. Again, he said this is a white male, thin build, bald, 45 to 50 years old, and he came with a brother around the same age. We'll continuing to get more information on this and hopefully have the name of this perpetrator later on this afternoon. Live in Dearborn Heights, Jim Kirsten, 7 Action News.